And also U.S. President Donald Trump has said that he's willing to speak directly to North Korea's Kim Jong-un, provided that certain conditions are met by the North Korean leader. Now, commenting on the talks between North and South Korea, Donald Trump has said that it would be great for humanity if both nations cooperated. We, uh, I talked, I don't think anything's changed. You have to have a certain attitude and you have to be prepared to do certain things. And I'm totally prepared to do that. But President Moon called me and we had a great discussion a couple of days ago and he thanked me very much. And I hope it works out. I very much want to see it work out between the two countries. All right, that's almost a sort of a conciliatory tone that's being struck by Donald Trump. And there is further indication of a softening of stance on the part of North Korea as well. Now, Pyongyang's representative to the International Olympic Committee has said that his country may send a representative to the Winter Olympics in South Korea next month. And according to reports, North Korea may send a figure skating pair to the games that are being held in the South Korean town of Pyeongchang from the 9th of February. The North Korean leader Kim Jong-un had indicated that sending a team across the hot border in his New Year's Day address. And earlier in the week, North Korea had also reopened a border hotline with South Korea. And ne next week, the two Koreas will be holding talks, the first such contact in almost more than two years. Now, the escalating tensions on the Korean peninsula have, of course, cast a long shadow on some of the excitement ahead of the Winter Olympics, which is slated to be held in South Korea next month. Now, although South Korea has invested billions of dollars in terms of setting up the infrastructure for the Games, it's also facing the prospects of huge financial losses. The Vyond's Mani Shukla brings you this report on what it means to hold a world sporting spectacle like the Winter Olympics in the shadow of war. The Korean Peninsula has been tense for the last several months in the backdrop of the intercontinental ballistic missile tests and the nuclear program which Kim Jong-un has been actively pursuing. Rhetoric and bluster on the part of US President Donald Trump has not helped matters. Instead, it had brought the Korean Peninsula on the brink of war. However, the olive branch that was offered by Kim Jong-un to South Korea as a part of his New Year's address seems to have broken the ice. South Korea offered high-level talks with North Korea to discuss the possibility of a North Korean contingent taking part in the Winter Olympics to be held in Pyeongchang next month. The United States, along with South Korea, decided to delay their military exercises in the region, to which North Korea has responded by agreeing to talks with South Korea on the 9th of January. The talks will take place at the border truce village of Pan Munjom. हम इस वक्त सियोल में हैं और ये यहाँ की यूनिफिकेशन बिल्डिंग है ये यहाँ का सरकारी आवास है क्योंकि साउथ कोरिया में इस बात को लेकर के काफी कोशिश की जा रही है कि जब भी नॉर्थ कोरिया और साउथ कोरिया एक दूसरे से मिलेंगे तो क्या तैयारियां होंगी जब उनका यूनिफिकेशन होगा तो क्या साउथ कोरिया के लिए किस तरीके से दिक्कतें आएंगी और नॉर्थ कोरिया को वो कैसे मदद करेंगे और यहां पर बैठ करके जो एक सपना है वो बुना जाता है लेकिन ये क्या सपना हकीकत होगा ये कुछ कहा नहीं जा सकता मंथ्स ऑफ प्रिपरेशन हैव गॉन इनटू द विंटर ओलंपिक्स इन पियोंगचांग इन द साउथ which will take place from the 9th till the 25th of February. More than the logistical challenge of organizing the Games, South Korea in recent months has been spending its energies on ensuring that athletes from around the world feel safe to travel to Pyeongchang, which is just 50 miles from the heavily militarized border with the North. Over a million tourists were expected to visit Pyeongchang for the Winter Games, but as of now, only about 230,000 people have booked their tickets. That is less than a quarter of what was estimated. Over 6,500 athletes and officials from around the world will be taking part in the event. The last Winter Games held in Sochi had sold well over 70% of the tickets even before the opening ceremony of the Games. We've lived in this kind of tension for the past 70 years and we have a history of successfully hosting many international events uh, in that background, uh, like the 88 Seoul Summer Games, the 2002 FIFA well, Football World Cup, and we expect another great games in 2018. And the situation has not affected our operation or preparations at all, and we expect it to be a great games. The Winter Games are taking place in the backdrop of extremely tense moments on the Korean Peninsula. The demilitarized zone is the 39th parallel, 
despite the thaw in the relations between the two Koreas, still remains on the edge. Vion brings you a sense of what life is like at the demilitarized zone. North Korea and South Korea are made of the DMZ, or demilitarized zone. And in this area, North Korea and South Korea are in front of each other. The DMZ is a buffer zone, which is made of the area 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 of the area. ताकि नॉर्थ कोरिया और साउथ कोरिया के बीच होने वाले संभावित युद्ध के खतरे को टाला जा सके लेकिन हकीकत तो यह है कि आज के दौर में डीएमजेड ही दुनिया का सबसे खतरनाक जगह बन चुका है साउथ कोरिया हैज इंट स्पेड एनी एक्सपेंस इन मेकिंग द विंटर गेम्स अ सक्सेस टू इंप्रूव कनेक्टिविटी टू प्योंगचांग द साउथ कोरियंस हैव बिल्ड द वोंजू गैंगन्यूइंग लाइन फॉर अ हाई स्पीड ट्रेन व्हिच कैन ट्रैवल एट स्पीड्स ऑफ ओवर 300 किलोमीटर्स पर आवर the trains which will run on the Wonju Gang Newing line will provide facilities such as high speed Wi Fi even when the trains are travelling at speeds of over 300 km per hour. South Korea has invested well over $12.6 billion in putting together the infrastructure that is needed to hold an event of this scale. So, unless enough assurances are given to the athletes and to the spectators that the games will take place in a peaceful setting, South Korea faces the prospects of poor attendance and heavy financial losses. Manish Shukla, reporting from Seoul for Vion.